three brains up here. Um, and, and yesterday, I was in Washington, D.C. at the uh, National Institute of Mental Health. And I had the opportunity to speak to the advisory council, which I'm a member of. And I started my presentation on the National Institute of Medicine's 2009 prevention report by taking <clears throat> these three brains Francisco and a neuropsychiatrist by the name of Dilip Jessup talked about an article in Science Magazine which did a study, experimental study, randomized controlled trial on juggling. And what this experiment did was it took people and put them in an experimental group that learned how to juggle of clown training, <laughs> and a group that didn't learn how to juggle. Before they did this work with these two groups, they neuroimaged their brains, looked at the brain, how fat it was, how thin it was, for both groups. The group that learned how to juggle had thicker brains at the end of three months. And so they had more connectivity, they had more neurosynapses, they may have had more neurogenesis, that is the ability to grow new brain cells and to have new connections. So what's becoming clear to me as I get old and, you know, sort of hopefully wise, hopefully, um, is that all of this great and wonderful neuroscience and genetics and metagenetics and genome, you know, all this stuff. We've already known. We already know this stuff. The thing that uh, has struck me since 70, when I first learned about recovery and the self-help system, because that's when I first found out about it was the depth of wisdom that's there. And it's, you know, it's kind of embarrassing actually to, you know, be looking at these brains and, you know, all the hot spots and the blue spots and these parts of the brain and understanding the chemistry and looking at the new cognitive behavior therapy and all these randomized controlled trials and all the genomics and the science and all this stuff. And then you pick up a, 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 a book by Abraham Lowe that tells you, look, you're going to have emotions. Sorry. <laughs> Don't know how to break this to you. But you're going to have emotions. You're going to get angry. You're going to get afraid. You're going to get all these things going on in you. And if you have any sense at all, you won't believe what you think. Because a lot of what you think is just that, thoughts. And if, in fact, you train your mind, if you practice, if you develop your will, your self-observation, your spotting, you can see these things coming before they drag you down the street. Because you don't want to go down that street. It's a dead end. You want to go this other way. Yeah. And you know, you practice, practice, practice. And so I can't begin to tell you how honored I am to be on this board. How grateful I am that I'll say we are trying to further this work. 
because despite all of the genius neuroscientists and geneticists and all these really, really smart people, which I heard from yesterday at the National Institute of Mental Health, some really, really smart people published tons of articles in Nature and Science, really smart people. Their knowledge does not make them wise. It does not make them wise. And quite honestly, I have seen more wisdom in these rooms than I have in those. Because it, it almost, and it's a little scary, actually. People who have information sometimes believe what they think. And they think they're wise. When all they really are is knowledgeable. And that's not enough. I wish it was. We've got a huge problem with the internet. People can look up anything and they think they are wise. When really they've got knowledge. But that knowledge doesn't have balance. And, and what I have seen from Dr. Lowe's work is just tons and tons and tons and tons of simple wisdom uh, a, a, a level of genius that is so profound but so simple. I've got a, a guy that I work with and uh, he's fond of telling me about his being average, which Dr. Lowe talked about. And the way this guy puts it is when he's in a room with a bunch of really intelligent, degreed, smart people, he always says, look, I know I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I know that. But I also know I'm not the dumbest guy in the world either. <laughs> Plus, I work real hard. And so, I'm going to be okay in this room. And that's what Dr. Lowe was talking about when he was talking about average. Being average. It's okay. It's okay. It's fascinating to me because the, the guy that was telling me about juggling, this neuroscientist, was talking also about aging and wisdom. And he was talking about how he was beginning to think as he did all of this great work on neuroscience and brain imaging that wisdom was really the balance and the, the, the synergy between all of these emotional things, the joy, the happiness, the elation, the fear, the anxiety. You know, you don't get one without the other. Sorry, I wish you could. 